Hello everybody and welcome back to another redstone video. So today I'm going to show you guys something that I've actually wanted to make for such a long time and I've just learned a new flying machine mechanic that makes this all possible. And the final thing I want to say is just a huge thanks for the support on the last redstone video. And without further ado, here's the fully working airplane flying machine that I tried to make as realistic as possible. So this is the airplane that I actually designed in about a day. So real quickly, I want to try to describe how this thing works. So with every single flying machine, it's pretty much the same thing. You have a small engine, which is this little tiny flying machine, just these six blocks here, which powers the rest of this thing and gets it all moving. And so how that actually works is you have two pistons, and so pretty much this is all you really need. So you have two pistons like this, and if I get a block to power these guys, all that happens is that the observers get updated and make the pistons extend in a motion kind of like this. Where this one will extend it, spinning it out just like that. And so now that one's moved forward one block. And when I do that again, it now pulled this one one block. And that moves it along. And so the entire flying machine moves along like this. And you can see it's moving in this direction. And it does that because whenever one of these gets moved, or when you update one of these, it will make a piston extend and de-extend pretty quickly, which causes it to spit out the block. So in this case, we'd want to update this guy right here, which would pull this whole thing forward, which would update the observer, make the piston get powered, and push this segment forward. Then it would, uh, once this gets pushed, it would update this one here, and it would push this piston, which pulls it along, so it would keep on pushing and pulling, and it would pull it all the way across, moving one block at a time. And so whenever that little flying machine right here gets moved forward, we have this main system right here, which is what I discovered, and this is what makes it all possible. I doubt this is anything new, but it's really helpful for building bigger flying machines like this. So whenever this gets moved forward one, it will actually push this piston, and it will push it right up against this block here. And because it's getting moved, it will update the observer, causing this piston to extend. So the piston will be pushed up against the slime block, and then since it's getting updated immediately after, it would push this entire segment forward, which would do the same to these three guys here. They would all get pushed up against the block, then the piston would extend, pushing this whole group forward, and that keeps on scaling up until you get a big enough piston area to move your entire machine. And so the main piece of this that's really important is this little system right here. So it's pretty simple, but whenever I have a piston right here that extends this forward, what will happen is these two blocks will extend forward as this piston extends, which causes them to move forward one block. But then once it reaches that one block there, the piston will extend again, pushing any blocks in front of it ahead one. So if we power this, you can see that the two blocks get moved and the piston extends, so any blocks in front of it would end up right here. And so what's so important about that is that this piston actually doesn't need to move any of the blocks in front here, only this piston does. So if we had 12 blocks in front of here, it would actually be able to move it, since this piston would push it forward, and then this one would be able to move the 12 blocks. And then if you had another group of these two somewhere within those 12 blocks, right at the front, you'd be able to push another 12 blocks and another 12 blocks, and you'd be able to move the entire thing forward without exceeding the piston push limit. And with that pretty terrible explanation covered, we can now look at the actual airplane. And so what I think actually makes this so cool is that you're able to go inside the airplane itself, and you're actually able to move around and walk around, go to different seats, or go to these little bathrooms back here, all while the flying machine is in motion. So right now the flying machine actually isn't active, so it's all stationary, nothing's moving, and nothing's activating. But if it was, I'd be able to walk around in here, which I'll show you guys in just a second. And you're able to go up to the front, you're able to go to the back, you're able to sit in these little seats here. And if you stand right in the middle, you'll actually get scooted back since you don't actually get moved. That's why you need these little seats here to have something to actually push you along. And so it's just about time to power up this entire thing. And so I already have a plane over there that I'm actually able to go and clone if I need to. And this one, if even if it got completely destroyed, it wouldn't matter. And so all I have to do is power this observer right here. And the entire machine starts to kick into action, all those pistons start extending, pulling things along. And so one thing that I should actually mention is that this machine looks pretty crazy when you're looking at it like this. Since it's actually having a really hard time showing what's actually there, since everything's constantly moving and changing positions. So a lot of these things out here are just ghost blocks, if I go up to it it will disappear. The actual machine is still moving forward and all the blocks are still there. But if we head inside it's going to get pretty loud, and I'm able to get inside. 
As you're able to walk around while the flying machine is moving, if I go up to one of these seats right here, I'm actually able to sit down and I'm, right now I'm in the entire machine moving forward. So you can see the entire machine moving with me, I'm able to walk up to here, I'll just go sit up in the front of the airplane. It's actually pretty difficult when you're trying to jump like that. So you're able to sit wherever you want, you're able to switch around seats, you're able to walk around, you're able to have multiple people in here and I think it's all pretty cool. And so let's go through this little drop spot to get out of the airplane. If we drop through there, we're back out. So this entire thing, if I stand stationary, will move right past me, and it's actually all moving one block at a time. And so to stop the entire airplane, all I had to do was place an obsidian block right here, which stops the little flying machine right here, and it isn't able to push any of the rest along. And so now the machine's all stopped again, and it's ready to be moved if we need it to. And so some of the annoyances about this airplane is that it actually only travels one direction. If you built this all up and you had it like this, it would only ever be able to go right behind me in that direction. And there's no way to turn it or make it go up or down or anything, that's just not the way these flying machines work. And one of the other things is it gets pretty loud, especially right in this back area over here. It gets super loud where we have tons of pistons activating. And so that's one of the smaller disadvantages, I don't really think it matters. And so it's not really too big of a deal, but it is pretty annoying if you want to go on a big adventure with your friends and you're all in here. It gets pretty loud, you're able just to turn down your volume, but it's definitely not going to be that quiet of a ride. And one of my favorite things about this entire thing is this area right here, is this is actually the first segment that I built up, this little flying machine and everything, and the way that this ended up working, where we have it get scaled up, the way it tapers off to the end of the tail, I think it just looks so great, and that's actually pretty important for the function of this thing, so the, that it turned out looking pretty good with the actual looks of the airplane, I think it's pretty awesome. And so some of the other little features is we have this little front area with these little windows, same with the windows on all these things here, and you're actually able to build up a little staircase right here to get in through the doorway if you want to have this actually dock somewhere, and you can just go in right here, you have to hit shift to squeeze in and you're able to go through. We also have a drop spot right here where you're able to jump down, and then we have these little pathways that you're able to go through with a ton of seats along the side, and then we also have some bathrooms back here. And so in this video I'm not actually going to do a tutorial, but if you guys really do want to see how to build this block by block, let me know down in the comments if we get enough people who actually really want to see this. I will do a video showing how to build this and a world download of the plane, so just let me know if you guys want to see that because this is a lot of work, so I gotta make sure you guys would actually want to. And so the reason I didn't do a tutorial for this video is there's no real purpose to this build, it just looks pretty cool and it's pretty fun to build. But if you guys do want to build this or something similar, I'll go through and kind of try to show you some different pieces of it, and also some important things to watch out for if you want to build it. And so the most important thing for the interior is that you need to have every block filled. If I just put these stairs in without any of this carpet, all that would happen is the flying machine would start moving forward and all these stairs would start collapsing up against the back wall. Since they actually aren't attached to the airplane in any way, they would all just kind of get pressed up against the wall. And so what you have to make sure to do is put in this carpet. So what that does is it fills in the space and that allows it, so whenever the piston back here is pushing, it's pushing this block against the stair, against the trap door, against the stair and carpet, stair and carpet, and all of that. And so you have all those blocks filled so that way nothing's able to get left behind or cramped up against the back. And another thing is to always watch out for the piston push limit. If I made this area right here just as big as the other spots, it would actually not be able to move this wing at all, since this piston right here has to push this entire row of blocks right along here, as well as this entire segment coming off. It doesn't have to worry about the actual wing at all, but it does have to push the first starter segment. And so if I was just to build that all big enough, the entire machine would squish together and it would actually be uh, unsalvageable and we'd have to destroy it and rebuild it, since you always need a space right here. And so that's actually the next important thing, is that when you're building it with this little circuit that I was talking about at the beginning, you need to have a space right in front of it, so that way it has room to get pressed up into and then extend it from there. If I just built it right up against it, it would put all the load on these back pistons here, since it would have to move the entire two modules all at once, and it wouldn't be able to do it. And so I know this is a pretty short video, but I think I'm going to end it here. There's really not too much to talk about with this thing, I just wanted to show you guys this because I think it's really pretty awesome, and I really do enjoy it, I think it's pretty cool, and we might actually build this one day in our survival world. So I want to thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time, and that's it for now, see you later.